That was Drifting by Miguel Johnson from his album, The Explorers. Hello and welcome to Elite Week, your weekly source for all the news from in and around the Elite Dangerous Galaxy. I'm your host, Kai Zen. The purpose of this show is to provide you a complete list of each item of interest and a link to click through to the original item. I'm well aware that less than half of these items will be of interest to any one particular commander, but every commander's interest will be unique, and so I provide it all and let you decide what to delve into. So let's get to it. Note, as YouTube provides a limited amount of space for links in the description, I will be pinning a comment with a continuation of the links below. We start the week off with Commander Mgram of the AXI with his video Glory to Mankind AXI, five minutes long. This kick-ass video is to anti-Xeno combat what Top Gun was to fighter pilots. I dare you to watch this video and not want to go blow up some Thargoids. Next up, we have my interview with Souverine, the editor-in-chief of Cosmonaut Magazine, the in-universe Star Citizen magazine. I've got links to both uh, my interview with him as well as a link to Cosmonaut Magazine, Episode 1, which you can click on uh, the PDF and read it through for free, and a Patreon if you're interested in supporting them on that. This is followed by my Fleet Carrier Beta 1 Post Changes Forum post, which details uh, a lot of the good changes that they made and some things that I think they still should take a look at. Check it out. Next up, we have the podcast, Hutton Orbital Radio, from last week. Uh, and in that, uh, there was the Powerful People Report uh, from Watherspoon of Galnet News Digest Radio fame uh, on Yuri Grom. So check out the Hutton Orbital Radio truckers. Also from Commander Watherspoon in the Galnet News Digest Radio feed, the Powerful People series continues with Edmund Mahan, a seven-minute video. Check it out. Galactic Bacon put out How to Scan Planet Rings for Hotspots, 12 minutes long. This is a continuation on his mining series. He had to take a little break there for a couple of weeks because uh, he had come down with COVID-19. But apparently him and the wife are on the mend, so we wish you all the best and look forward to more good stuff to come. The next item for discussion is the Low Sodium Super Friendos Round Table, Fleet Carrier Beta 1. This is a uh, compilation series that I put together with Elite Week, Loose Screws Podcast, Down to Earth Astronomy, Commander Plater, The Burr Pit, Galnet News Digest, and Alec Turner of the Buckyball Racing Club fame. Um, you can find this on the Loose Screws uh, YouTube page. You can find this on Down to Earth Astronomy's page, on Plater's page, and on the Burr Pit page. Um, whichever way you choose to get it, go and take a look at this roundtable. You will not be disappointed. This was followed by Burr Pit, Witch Space News, five minutes long. Uh, he talks about the anti Xeno Initiative Fleet Carrier Poll. Talks about the beta snapshot announcement of April 30th, the Elite Dangerous Commander's Toolbox by Down to Earth Astronomy, and a very cool Lego SRV that Nick Webb of SPVFA fame put together. This minifig scale SRV has lighting and was put together with over 2,000 pieces. So it is well worth checking out. Also, the Burr Pit put out the DSSA Initiative, a special report where they talk all about the DSSA um, with uh, their, their plan to put fleet carriers in every quadrant of the galaxy to aid uh, explorers in being able to repair, refuel, etc., and uh, have places outpost all along the galaxy to sell off their cartographic data, which is awesome. Down to Earth Astronomy put out AnnouncingCommandersToolbox.com, a 13 minute long video where he goes in depth over his awesome new site that has tools for just about everything that you want to do as a commander in Elite Dangerous. Drew Wagar put out his lore tour. Now, I'm coming through a lot of things here that sort of have fallen through the cracks because for the last couple of weeks, I've been doing in-depth uh, 
coverage of the fleet carriers. So I'm just gonna kind of pick up a few things as we go through here. Drew Wagar's lower tour is continuing on apace. Uh, so episode one, so it begins, which took place in the Soul system, uh, which is about two hours long. And that was a couple of weeks back. Then episode two, the expansion, which focused mostly on the Beta Hydri uh, system and a couple of systems around there where uh, he talked about sort of the early steps of mankind out into the galaxy. Episode three, Bread and Circuses, again, about two hours long, focuses on uh, Akinar and, you know, the Empire and that part of the story. <clears throat> so I've linked all three of these episodes uh, out. So it's two hours each, so six hours total. This is awesome stuff. If you are into the lore of Elite Dangerous, you owe it to yourself to check out. Next up, we have the pilot with a pair of videos, the Federal Assault Ship, the FAS, which is an eight minute long video, and the Viper Mark Force uh, ship, which is another eight minute long video. Very good reviews, go check them out. Next up, we have from Commander Gogath, his in-depth review of the Collection of Wonders. Um, he's got five videos here that go through that system in detail. You know, that system is either, depending on who you ask, either the best or the second best system in the entire game. Between It's between this and the Dry Owl Awesomes. But uh, in these videos, they're a couple minute long each. He goes through each of the vistas, each of the sort of points of interest of that system. You know, you've got <clears throat> the main star, which is a ring star. Also in there, you've got a ringed neutron star. Um, it's just check out the entire series. It's going to take you, you know, 10, 12 minutes and you're going to be delighted. And I think that after you check this out, you too will plot a course for the Collection of Wonders and go check it for yourself. Primetime Casual put out The Casual Guide to the Galaxy, Season 1, Episode 9, No Assists, where, you know, if you remember, those that remember back a few weeks <clears throat> when we last did coverage of this, in Episode 8, it was the Scotsman where he flew with Sanderling and he sort of saw the amazing things that you can do with flight assists off. Well, in this episode, he works on it himself. And he followed that up with uh, the Casual Guide to the Galaxy, Season 1, Episode 10, Genesis, in which he visits the Epsilon Indy system and the amazing Mitterrand's Hollow. Go check them out. Next up, we have a video from NASA. The Artemis Update, a year of progress on returning to the moon, three minutes long. Go check that out. It's amazing. Next up, we have a pair of videos by Obsidian Ant. The first is Elite Dangerous, Future of Carriers, Making Profits, Commodity Markets Issues, and Speculation, 14 minutes long. And that's followed by another Obsidian Ant video, Beta 2 Snapshot Details, and some thoughts on Player Economy, 6 minutes long. They're both worthwhile, so check them out. Then we have Commander Avasa of the AXI with his AX Debrief, Xeno Research Group, Post Beta Survey, and more, eight minutes long. Commander Exorcist of the SPVFA put out a pair of videos, Out There Season 2, Episode 12, and Out There Season 2, Episode 13, four minutes long each. Uh, Commander Exorcist is uh, the guy responsible for the awesome stuff that you're seeing on the screen right now. He is a phenomenal photographer, videographer, and uh, pilot, and elite, and, uh, and a good friend. So check out his stuff. All of his videos, well, these series of videos are basically just like a music video commercial for awesome stuff and Elite Dangerous. This is followed by Commander Spatula's Crackpot Elite Dangus theories. Uh, this is maybe one of my new favorite shows. This is a series that he's putting together with his crackpot theories, completely made up shit. And um, I don't know, just just awesome comedy. Um, but within that, there's also sort of some very astute observations and interesting uh, thought provoking sort of premises. So uh, this this first one is fleet carriers, eight minutes long. Um, 
I, I, all I can say is that these are the absolute stupidest videos I have ever fallen madly in love with. So check out his series because it's good stuff. And then we have the Sagittarius Eye documentary, Gran Turismo, six minutes long. Obviously, anything that Sagittarius Eye ever puts out is worthwhile. Go check it out. This is followed by, by the Depression Channel, Elite Dangerous, Extremely Toxic Gameplay. This is a sort of m clip or snapshot or slice of life into the uh, apparent uh, back and forth between uh, Spear and Code, two groups of, uh, of players that uh, are sort of engaging in PvP combat against each other and mining salt. And uh, I don't know, it's one of those situations where it's like, all right, it's it's funny. When you see PvPers fighting other PvPers, then, you know, you can kind of sit back and enjoy the show and, and, uh, and you know, I don't know. It's, it's I, I found it hilarious. So, all right, we have Alec Turner of the Buckyball Race Club in his the Cortez Base Circuit Challenge, three minutes long. He's uh, showing off that particular circuit flying around the base, and uh, it is kick ass. Which brings us to Saturday, April twenty fifth. First up, Drew Wagar, Lore Tour, Episode Four. An interview with Kate Russell, the author, um, two hours long. Again, continuing the entire series of, of lore discussions on uh, on Elite Dangerous, and again, definitely worthwhile. <clears throat> Followed by Down to Earth Astronomy, Sidewinder to Fleet Carrier, Part Four, Upgrade Time, eleven minutes long. This is a continuation of the series. He's basically in this series taken a brand new account and is going from brand new stock Sidewinder, never logged in before, completely harmless, penniless and whatever, to having a fleet carrier in two months. And if he can do it, you can do it if you want to. Not everybody has to. This is followed by Commander Sanderling, flight assist off Viper, first full timed three lap run at Farseer Raceway. Uh, for those of you who say like, yeah, I'm, I'm awesome, I'm excellent, I'm the best, I'm whatever, I don't need to flight assist off. With flight assist, I do better than anything I could do with flight assist off. Let me just ask you, watch this video, see what this guy can do with flight assist off, and tell me that you have even the slightest chance of being able to copy that with flight assist on. The answer is just no. Is flight assist on better for sort of noob pilots, for people of of lesser skill, like myself, for example? Yes. But if you take the time to master that beast, flight assist off will give you a better, faster, more maneuverable ship and make you win every engagement, hands down, no question. All right, followed by Commander Guru 951 with his Elite Dangerous Pink Floyd video, Nobody Home, Meeting the Mentor. This is just a five minute long uh, music video. Uh, it's awesome. It's just good stuff. That takes us to Sunday, April 26, 2020. Start off with a Rusty Dog stream. Uh, Return of the Magnificent Seven. Um, the thought behind the naming of this video is that he is going back to 7 billion. He's building up his credits again, so he's ready for fleet carriers or for what have you. Good stream, six hours long. As I've said many, many times, throw Rusty Dog on on the second screen and go about mining or, or mission running or doing whatever it is that you're doing and just chill with your good buddy. Um, this, this guy deserves all of the watches, all of the follows, all of the subscribes. He's awesome. <clears throat> all right, so we've got Crimson Gamer 99, PVP versus Jawal. Again, this is a situation, this is a completely consensual PVP, two guys going at it, and it was sort of meme-tastic and hilarious and stupid and funny and all of the things. Go check it out. Um, the only thing that they didn't include in that video was an Omaiwa Shinderu reference. But other than that, he's got it all. 
<clears throat> All right. That's followed by Manus Dextra with his 900 meters per second Imperial Eagle called the Razorback. In this 18 minute long video, he uh, gets you hyped up for it, shows you a detailed build of how he engineered that uh, that Razorback ship and uh, and then shows you what you can do with it. And it's pretty awesome. This is followed by my Elite Week Episode 7, last week's interview with Bruce Gambit Garrido of Frontier Developments. I don't know, you know, if there's a chance that you've watched this and haven't watched that video, uh, I, I think probably everybody already has, but if you have not, go check out that video. Um, I don't mean to brag, I'm just gonna say, we had a very cool, very open, very in-depth conversation on a lot of issues. And I think that if you check out that video, you're going to be surprised and shocked at some of the things that you hear. And very, very, I think, hopeful hopeful, and, and interested and ready for the new era, because good stuff is coming. <clears throat> All right, that's followed by two uh, episodes of JN Trax's Distant Screws, episode 11 and 12, five hours long and three and a half hours long. These are the penultimate and ultimate uh, episodes of his documentation of the Distant Screws expedition. Now, just for those who might not know, if you're at all interested in doing an expedition in Elite Dangerous, but you're kind of like, well, there's a lot to it. I don't know. I've, I've been exploring a little, but not really that much. I don't know what to do. Um, I'm a little reticent or reluctant to sign up for one because I feel like I might not, you know, know what I need to do or what's needed of me, whatever. <clears throat> What JN Trax did was recorded an entire expedition in 12 parts, and all of them are available on his YouTube, which I've got links to here. And you can go through and sort of every minute of that expedition that he did was all documented. So you can watch from taking off inside the bubble, him going out one route, and, and going out to Colonia and then Sag A and doing a little more exploring out that way. And then the route all the way back through a different route. Um, and you can see 100% of the time he films, you can see the entire expedition. And I feel like for some people that'll just be interesting as sort of, um, oh, okay, that's cool. That's like a, a playthrough, a let's play series or whatever. But for other people that might be a little reticent to go in depth on an expedition, I feel like that could put you at ease to say like, hey, I can do this too. So if you're at all interested, go check out JNTrax or JNTrax YouTube channel rather. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, see for yourself. All right, and Seraph put out external camera phantom versus Cyclops solo kill. 10 minute long video. He's got an external camera set up as he takes on a Cyclops. And it's just cool as shit to see in a sort of a third person type uh, situation where, you know, I don't know. It, it was just very, very cinematic to me. I dug it. I thought it was metal as fuck. So I put it on here. All right. <clears throat> Which brings us to Monday, April 27th. We're going to start off with Down to Earth Astronomy and his Hello Dave, episode 146, 10 minutes long. He talks about the beta snapshot. He talks about, uh, or rather, beta 2 snapshot. He talks about his 50,000 subscriber celebrations, the launching his commander's toolbox, and his stream schedule. Good stuff. Down to Earth Astronomy also put out his 50,000 subscriber celebration and giveaway list. Uh, it's sort of a nine minute long video that shows all the stuff that he's going to be doing for his celebrations. And he's giving out some awesome shit. He's giving out like game glass and like, a, I don't know, what is that Google tablet or whatever to run game glass on. He's giving out uh, like that, that 100,000 arcs, whatever. It's like 85,000, but then you get like a bonus 15,000. So you get like over 100,000 arcs. He's giving out uh, a X52 Pro Hotas set and multiple other things. So go check those out. They're, it's it's awesome stuff. See if you can win and, you know, get some good stuff. <clears throat> All right. And that takes us back to Commander Spatula with his uh, Crackpot Elite Dangus Theories video. This one is 
Universal Cartographic, six minutes long, in which he explains to you how it doesn't all add up and the map people are getting us. I think he's. this is sort of the elite dangerous space equivalent of the uh, Flat Earthers talking about how it's big maps are somehow keeping the <laughs> secrets from us. Um, I, I don't know. All I could say is, like I said, I, I, I love... Commander Spatula, I love the stuff he puts out. It's incredibly stupid and it makes me chuckle and giggle all day long. All right, so this was followed by, of course, every Monday night at 8 p.m., the Sidewinder Slaughter uh, from uh, Level 11. Uh, and that's repeated every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. UTC for the European peoples. Um, <clears throat> so check it out. Monday at 8 Eastern, Wednesday at 8 UTC. Which takes us to Tuesday, April 28th. The Burr Pit put out his My Top 5 Most Wanted Quality of Life Improvements, seven minutes long. Phenomenal video, a must watch. Um, and I cannot argue with any of the quality of life improvements that he asked for. In fact, spoiler alert, his number one thing that he asked for is bookmark bar, uh, bookmark folders and uh, the ability to organize them, which is exactly the thing that I asked Bruce for in my interview with him last week. So great minds think alike, and so do Burr and I. All right, which takes us to Astro Geeks who put out a video. Now this is not an in-game video. This is a real world, real galaxy science video. But they put out a video Weirdest Known Planets in the Universe, six minutes long, in which they go through a bunch of different planets. They, they go through the one with the, the massive, massive ring, the, the largest ring that we we know of in the galaxy. Um, they go through the blackest planet. There's this planet that is made of some unknown substance, and scientists are saying it's definitely something sort of we don't know about, which is what's making it absorb all the light. It like no light comes off of it, which is super, super interesting. Um, <clears throat> they talk about this one planet that's like twice the size of Earth, but is almost entirely made out of carbon and goes very, very close to its parent star, which causes it to have massive, massive amounts of pressure. And basically, they think that a, a good chunk of that or, or the majority of that planet is just basically diamond. Um, all kinds of stuff like that. And these Astro Geeks videos always get me excited to like go down the rabbit hole of trying to locate those planets in Elite Dangerous and go see them and see like, oh man, I wonder what that's like. That, that seems pretty cool. Um, all right. And speaking of super hot planets, uh, the next video is Sagittarius Eyes Travel Guide, The World of Hell, a two minute long video talking about Scar D1. This planet is amazeballs. It is literally the surface temperature on this planet is half the temperature of the melting point of steel. You can fly your ship in at the right time, land, get out and do stuff in your SRV. But if you stay too long and your ship, your ship will overheat and basically just uh, explode, which is crazy. Um, so go check out that two minute long video. And if you've got balls of steel and a whole lot of heat sinks, get your ass over to Scar D1 and see if you can live through it. This was followed by a weekly podcast, Lave Radio, episode 290, The Scooby-Doo and the Curse of the Xeno Bunny. Um, <clears throat> they had some technical difficulties, but they talked about sort of well, all manner of things, obviously go check them out. But uh, one of the main topics was like, what do you want from sort of space legs? Like, how could that be cool in the, uh, if that is a thing that's coming in the upcoming expansion? <clears throat> and as always, uh, Lave Radio is followed by Galnet News Digest uh, with the incomparable Commander Watherspoon. This episode is April 28th, 3306, nine minutes long, in which he goes through 
a whole host of things, um, <clears throat> including the beta snapshot, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and lampoons it all as only Watherspoon could. Like he does a thing where he talks about the Brewer Corporation is giving away a you know, free two week rental of a fleet carrier. All you have to do is take a picture of yourself in front of your bank balance showing that you have over 5 billion credits. It's, it's all stuff like that. It's good stuff. Uh, Down to Earth Astronomy's Tuesday stream, I Build Your Ship Live. He had people write in with <clears throat> ships that they wanted, like, hey man, build me a mining, you know, uh, clipper, or hey man, build me a, you know, ultimate uh, Thargoid combat, you know, crate or whatever. And he went through and like figured out what, what he thinks would be the best sort of builds for these. And this is sort of his flavor. This is not to say that there can't be other and possibly even superior builds elsewhere, but he is a genius at building ships and, uh, you know, has a good conversation while he does it. So it's good stuff. <clears throat> This was followed by Commander Guru951 with his The Quest to Find Raxla, Part 1, 11 minutes long. I know a lot of people are going to have a grudge against Commander Guru951 for his previous, like a year and a half ago, whatever, Raxla hoax. And I know that a lot of people are going to not want to hear whatever he has to say. But uh, what I would say is this it's fair to carry a grudge. It's fair to say I'm going to be highly suspect of anything that this guy says, but uh, what he was talking about in this episode where he's just literally going through like the guy who wrote the Dark Wheel novella had written a book under a different name, under a pen name, a pseudonym, uh, like a year before <clears throat> in which he mentions this place called Raxla. I mean, it's lots of interesting things. Um, Definitely, that book was definitely not sort of, at least that we know of, canon. Uh, it, it kind of was way out there and talked about all these diff different alien races and all kinds of stuff that, you know, that we don't have at all that, that, that I know of at all in the Elite Dangerous Galaxy. But it's interesting. Um, so, I don't know. Check it out and see what you think. Or don't. If you don't like the guy and don't want to see it, that's entirely your call. Next up, we have Commander Avasa with AXI Flight School, Crate Mark II, a seven minute long video. Uh, the Crate Mark II is a mainstay of AX combat and sort of Avasa gives you the whole sort of story as to why and and shows you, you know, how what it can do and, and how it can be used and, you know, good stuff. Anton Petrov put out a video a star that survived a black hole encounter is turning into a planet 11 minutes long. Again, this is not in the Elite Dangerous universe. This guy, uh, this is an amazing mathematician, mathematician and physicist. And he puts out a, a video series called What the Math. And he just talks about like all kinds of weird shit in the galaxy. I always enjoy them and often link them. All right. That takes us to Wednesday, April 29th. Down to Earth Astronomy put out My New Hotas, unboxing the Verpal Constellation Alpha. Uh, he gets basically a VPC Constellation Alpha and a VPC Mongoose T500CM. Uh, so it's, it's his new stick and throttle. And he shows you the whole unboxing video, goes over the different switches and hats and different things that, you know, modifications you can make to it. And I am absolutely jealous because those uh, those things are amazing. To be clear, just so there's no question, uh, those are not sponsored videos. He did not tell Verpal he was doing them or any, ask for any special anything. He just paid full price, ordered them, waited in line. He actually waited for months because it was a back order issue and finally got the damn things. And he is like a kid in a schoolyard, man. He's or a kid in a kid at Christmas, I guess that's the phrase. He's, he's super, super, you can see the joy on his face playing with these things. And uh, if I got rid of my having to deal with an X-56, I'd probably be happy too. All right, so next up we have Obsidian Ant with fleet carriers comparing the largest player owned ships in the game or in space games, 10 minutes long. So 
This is sort of an interesting video. I dig it, I like it, but I have a couple of issues with it. <clears throat> I feel like it's fairly obvious by watching this video that Ant is, is basically championing the sort of cause of, hey, let's get rid of upkeep costs. And uh, in so doing, he basically says, let's look at three analogous ships. Number one, the freighter, which is sort of the big super ship of uh, No Man's Sky. And he says, see, well, this one does not have upkeep costs, which it doesn't, but it, it's also not persistent. It's, you know, whatever. Uh, and then he shows the, um, I think the next one that was shown was the, the fleet carrier in uh, Elite Dangerous. And he's like, well, this one has upkeep cost and yada, yada, yada. He talks about other features as well, to be clear. And then he shows the, um, what are those? He talks about two different ships um, from Star Citizen. And he's like, and then there's these ones. And it's like, okay. Oh, uh, the next one was Eve. Sorry. He, he talks about the Titan from Eve. And he says, you know, here's the Titan from Eve. And Eve, you know, this one has no upkeep cost. And that's where I take a little issue. Because a fleet carrier in Elite Dangerous is not analogous to a Titan in Eve. I played Eve. Okay. A Titan in Eve is a massive super cap, uh, you know, sort of assault ship that can do a lot of things. It's got the Doomsday device. It's got all kinds of stuff, but that is not analogous to a fleet carrier. For example, most Titan pilots, most, most owners of Titans have a separate side character that they have on the Titan that you log out and you don't really play that Titan that much unless you're really in a coordinated situation where you get a lot of help because otherwise like your Titan is going to get locked down and then everyone's going to have a go at it and they're going to pop your Titan and you're going to lose it. It'll be gone forever. So number one, a Titan is not uh, a persistent item. Number two, a Titan is a destroyable item. So that's two ways right off the bat where a Titan is nothing like a fleet carrier. <clears throat> number three, Titans are sort of a big super capital battleship that, you know, can really wreck face in a fight type situation and are used and supported with a fleet of ships that protect it. Um, whereas a fleet carrier is not. A fleet carrier is basically a player-owned station. So if you wanted to say what's the most analogous thing in EVE to a fleet carrier in Elite Dangerous, I think it would be the player-controlled, player-owned stations. And those player-owned stations do have an upkeep cost. You have to keep their fuel going so that their services will run. Otherwise, their services will, will crash. They'll, they'll stop. <clears throat> so so that there's that. Then he goes to the next game and says, you know, well, compare them to these conceptual versions of these super capital ships or these carrier ships. And he lists two of them in Star Citizen. Um, neither of these ships, first off, Star Citizen is not sort of a released game. It is an alpha. And, and hey, no offense, whatever. Secondly, these two ships do not exist in that alpha. They're sort of conceptual. They've been listed, they've been talked about, but they don't exist anywhere. Thirdly, these two ships don't even exist in the roadmap for that game. So like, they haven't even put down on the list that they're planning on starting working on those two ships at any particular time. To be clear, those two ships, I think the Javelin and the whatever the hell, those ships are ships where they've said, this'll be a cool thing that we'll have someday and it'll be a big fuck off ship and it'll hold other ships and it'll do neat stuff. And like, that's it. That That's, that's the, so you, you can't really compare fleet carriers in Elite Dangerous to a nebulous concept that hasn't even been defined internally of a game that is 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 still even in alpha like that doesn't that doesn't work for me however he does make a lot of good observations with regard to it he contrasts a lot of interesting things and you know so judge for yourself you may look at it and say hey, i agree more with his point and not yours in which case 
fair enough, whatever. Everybody's entitled to their opinions. But um, there was some good stuff in that video. I thought it was good. It's very clear that he has an agenda. His agenda is get rid of upkeep costs. I don't think he's going to be successful in that agenda. And some of the analogs that he makes to support, I feel, to support or highlight that argument are questionable to me. So that's just my opinion on it. Next up, we have Commander Avasa with his uh, video, Hauler versus Cyclops. So someone submitted this, this video to him as, uh, you know, like they have to submit these videos for review, like to get the rank, uh, you know, to get that, that role or that rank within the AXI. And he was like, this is a cool video. I'm gonna share this with everybody. And he did, it's a 15 minute long video and it is awesome as hell. To see a Hauler take out a Cyclops is just, uh, to me, it's like, holy crap. All right, if you have the skill and you have the knowledge, you can achieve it <laughs> with this game. You know, you've already seen, I when you see like, oh, Maligno takes down half of the galaxy in a Sidewinder or whatever, I kind of, I look at that and I'm like, uh-huh, whatever. Because like, Maligno is God tier. I will never be within like, I'll, I'll never be close enough that I can see him on my radar. He's that far ahead of me in skill. But when you see that there are other guys that are also able to do stuff that like, you know, hauler versus Cyclops one-on-one -on -one and win, it, it, it's like, all right, well, maybe I should, you know, get good scrub. Maybe one day I'll be able to be somewhere in the, the, the distant, you know, in the, in the distant trail behind those guys, but, but at least on the trail. All right, so that takes us to Alec Turner, who put out a couple of funny little videos. His first one is Scaling Brothers Installation, two minutes long. Um, Alec decided that he wanted a cool view when he logged into the beta, so he hopped on top of his ship in an SRV, then dismissed the ship and it started to fly away. Then he launched from that and landed at the very, very, very top of, there's like a twin tower type World Trade Center type situation at this one base, Brothers Installation. Massive, massive, like, you know, nice size planetary base, two massive, huge fuck off towers that go up like hundreds of floors high. Well, he landed on top of that damn thing and is is that's where he is sitting, logged out uh, at his base. So that's, I guess, where he logged in uh, today when, you know, when the game started up, and that's where he'll log in uh, when the, the beta happens, beta two, uh, you know, that's where he got snapshotted. And then he put out another video called Going Up, which is a cute little three minute video, which just shows like an elevator going up that building and then you get to the very top and you see his little buggy sitting there hanging out. Hilarious stuff as always. The things that Alec Turner can do with an SRV makes you really, really think like, all right, I could I could do a lot of stuff. I you know, it takes imagination and a whole lot of skill, and he's got both, so there you go. Next up we've got Has Mango with Build Fly Dream trailer. It's four minutes long. To me, this the the so this and the next video that I'm gonna talk about, they're both like to me, these are the like these are the videos where I look at it and I go, you know, if Frontier could put either of these videos in the middle of like, you know, in the middle of the Super Bowl or whatever, or a World Cup type situation where you just, if you could get a billion eyeballs on this video, you would sell millions and millions of copies of this game because these videos are amazing. So check out both of these videos. The first is by Has Mango. It's called Build Fly, Build Fly Dream Trailer four minutes long. And the second is by Orchestral Design. And it's, I accidentally made the best trailer for Elite Dangerous, two minutes long. Check out both of these YouTube videos. They're kicking the pants. Share them with your friends. Share them with people on forums or other game places and get people into Elite Dangerous. And that brings us to today, Thursday, recording day, April 30th. We start off with uh, Commander Burr with his Thursday Breakfast Club. Um, in today's, he talked about that the snapshot had just happened. And while he's flying around, he has a really interesting conversation about 
a bunch of things, but one of the things that I picked out as particularly interesting was he talked about one of the guys in his group, his squad, that has sort of this uh, speed run situation set up where he's got uh, mapped mining nodes that uh, that he hits uh, in, in a ring doing LTDs, and he literally just boosts from one asteroid to the next. Um, <clears throat> he knows which ones he's hitting, and he's able to, he was able to the other day, do five full runs in, a, in one day, and in one of those runs, he made a billion credits. So if you're taking it on an average of, you know, around a billion credits each, he generated enough funds to pretty much buy a fleet carrier in one day, which is A, very impressive. Not everyone is gonna be that good at doing it that fast, um, but even if you're not anywhere near as skilled and it takes you twice as long, the fact that you can knock out a fleet carrier in two days worth of hardcore mining, and the fact that that means then, you know, if you were to do four days of hardcore mining, you have, you know, the fleet carrier and an extra five bill paid up, which means that you can sort of run yours for dec well, not a decade, sorry, run yours for five years without having to really mess with it or worry about it. Next up, we have by Melody Sheep, a documentary, The Secret History of the Moon, 15 minutes long. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but I'll just say that this uh, is a very cool scientific documentary that starts off and has sort of woven through it these very artistic, almost, you know, poetic sort of sentiments. And it's, it's a very interesting mix for a very cool product. And next up, we have Commander Avasa with his AXI debrief uh, posted just today, six minutes long. In it, he talks about updates to the anti-Xeno knowledge base. He talks about the third double Hydra kill and second Octagoid kill uh, and has uh, updates on uh, Commander 100 Point Rub's uh, fleet carrier survey and a whole bunch of other things. Um, <clears throat> So the, the AXI has been hard at work. And uh, yeah, there's a there's also a Cyclops class coming up soon and uh, all kinds of stuff. So check that out. And that brings us to wrapping up the evening. Um, <clears throat> the last thing, I saved this for last. Uh, the BBC did a documentary, it's BBC Sound Series documentary. Uh, this game changed my life. And this is the, the documentary, documentary series where they talk about <clears throat> interesting things to do with how uh, games have had profound sort of impacts on people's life. Uh, this is like a half hour long show. Like I said, it just aired on the BBC today. And uh, it tells the beautiful and touching and at the same time heartbreaking story of, uh, of Michael and Matt. Um, those of you who don't remember, um, we talked about this, you know, <clears throat> a couple, couple months back. But for those who don't remember, um, I've included a link to the, um, the Frontier Forums thread uh, with the, the story of this uh, young man who uh, was terminally ill and uh, was just very brave and fought every step of the way. And um, <clears throat> the story was so touching um, that when his family had sort of reached out, Frontier Development um, as a company, Frontier sort of stepped up and really went out of their way to make a incredible experience for this boy and uh, and to, and for his family as a sort of a touchstone. And they brought in, <clears throat> you know, a writer and they, they worked on a project and they sort of just 
just created something beautiful. And I'm, I'm not going to go into it more than that other than to say, check the link for the forum and read through the thread and then listen to the BBC Sound Series documentary or, I don't know, I'm not telling you, do it however which way you want. Do this documentary first and then read the thread, whatever you want to do. But uh, they go together as a pair. It is a absolutely beautiful story. And uh, yeah, I, I challenge you to listen to that story and, and not, not sort of tear up um <clears throat> so yeah and uh that does it for this week i hope you enjoyed the show and we're gonna play a little uh the closing song we'll play some uh commander toko so we'll play the roof of the galaxy from the album dreams from beyond the frontier i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you next week good night Take a blast or two Cause in those pristine rings There's a fortune for you We'll work together my friend As the mother low cracks This might come to an end But jump on board Enter those chords Oh we're the wandering souls Come and lend a hand For the distant world Let us fire and jump dry Come, fill, there's a chatter 